Okay, this is a summary of parts of the BBC Panorama investigation into Facebook, which was aired by the BBC on the 8th of May 2017. The programme gave a fairly basic overview of how Facebook works as an advertising medium. It then went on to look at how Facebook is used by political campaigners in the UK and the US. Panorama asserted that the first major use of Facebook in politics in the UK was during the Brexit campaign in the summer of 2016. The Panorama team interviewed Jerry Gunster, who was described as the campaign strategist for Leave.eu, one of the Brexit groups, who described the use of Facebook as a game changer. Gunster said that you can say to Facebook that you want to make sure that you're identifying particular voters right down to the individual level, level in particular constituencies around the UK. He calls that micro-targeting and he gives the example of fishermen. He could make sure that a fisherman gets a particular tailored message in his Facebook feed, which only he will see because they're invisible to the other side and to the public in general. So Gunster showed some of the material that went out, which said that uh, if you vote to leave, this is directly addressed to fishermen, that if you vote to leave, then you'll regain control over fishing policy and this will directly affect your family's income and prospects. Then he said he can do the exact same thing for any particular group. He gave the example of a factory worker in the Midlands who's lately lost his job due to EU economic policy. And he said, however you want to micro-target that message, you can do it with Facebook. Panorama team then went off to Washington in the States and spoke to Gary Coby from the Republican National Committee. He claimed that the Republicans had used Facebook heavily uh, and did not deny a ballpark figure of around $70 million spent on purchasing advertising services and micro-targeting services from Facebook during the US election, presidential election. Kobe then walked through how the Republicans had used their relationship with Facebook. They would gather names and addresses, phone numbers, personal details like that, put them in a file and send them to Facebook. Facebook would then trace them and match them to their Facebook profile if they had one, and most people do. Once a voter is matched, they're then put into a category called an audience. An audience is essentially a basket of users who can then be targeted with specific messages. Kobe said that Facebook was decisive in the Trump campaign, and it was one of the reasons, it strikes me, how the Trump campaign was able to fly under the radar of mainstream media and how the mainstream media underestimated the effectiveness of his campaign because so much of it was happening out of sight on Facebook. Panorama then went on to challenge Facebook's claim that it wants to be open and transparent in its operations. Facebook was hiding behind client confidentiality according to Panorama. However, Panorama quoted Borrell Associates estimating that Facebook had earned at least $250 million, a quarter of a billion dollars, from the US presidential election campaign in 2016. Cody from the Republicans claimed that both his party and the Democrats had Facebook teams working alongside them. Facebook provided dedicated staff to the Republicans who they could call when they had problems with the service or to train them how to use various audience targeting tools that Facebook offers, or they could have a campaign idea and the Facebook people would help them create um, that campaign online. Eventually, the Panorama team got an interview in the form of Simon Milner, the policy director of Facebook. I have to say he was incredibly evasive. Panorama asked Milner whether anyone from Facebook had worked with the political parties. He didn't deny this, but he replied with a soundbite, which was, no Facebook employee worked for the political campaign. Panorama was a bit shy in showing how many times the questions were put, but it's obvious from the edit that they were put over and over and over again. And this guy Milner uh, was incredibly tough. He hung tough and he just gave the soundbite every single time. So, 
with a practiced eye on editing, I could see that several times, you know, the same question was put to him over and over again uh, on this question of when he, whether anybody from Facebook was seconded to the parties. And eventually he came out with um, a soundbite, which was just a statement of Facebook's activities. He says, well, Facebook will offer clients advice on services. Or Facebook will advise on how best to use our product. Finally, he, he said that uh, we do have people in Facebook whose job it is to advise politicians and governments on how best to make use of Facebook. But he refused to say how many people were working with politicians. And again, he used the evasion techniques that uh, many people in the corporate world now have part of their media training. He simply brushed aside the question, how many people are working, and went on to say, but I'm very concerned about this. Facebook is a highly profitable and profit-driven and data-driven company. It will certainly monitor the activities of its employees and how many people are servicing particular accounts. So that data must be available. Then the programme looked forward to the, the current general election campaign, Theresa May versus Jeremy Corbyn, and speculated on the role that Facebook will be playing. And the point is made by Damien Collins, a Conservative MP and former chair of the Culture, Media and Sport Committee, and that Facebook is unregulated, so therefore it doesn't fall within the rules on the amount of money and effort that can be spent by political parties during uh, election campaigns. The BBC and other broadcast media are strictly governed on impartiality and there are cash limits on the amount of money the parties and individual MPs can spend on their campaigns in other media such as leaflets and constituency newspapers and billboard posters but it appears they can spend just as much as they like or as much as they can raise on Facebook advertising. The programme then went on to look at the fake news issue that was thought to be so important in deciding the US election. Panorama claimed that there was some fake news affecting Donald Trump, but mostly they were about Hillary Clinton. And the programme said that there were dozens and dozens and dozens of fake news stories spread by Facebook or across Facebook, to be fair to Facebook, using Facebook to disseminate them during the election campaign. She was linked to sex scandals, several murders. Mark Zuckerberg was quoted, Mark Zuckerberg was quoted playing down the significance of fake news on Facebook. He said the idea that fake news determined the election was ridiculous. Electors voted on the basis of their lived experience and not what they read on social media. He said that uh, the idea that Facebook influenced the election in any way was, quote, a pretty crazy idea speaking at a conference in 2016 called Techonomy. Panorama then gave examples of misleading information, misinformation that was put out over Facebook during the election campaign. And this included highly targeted messages with false dates for the election day, um, setting, rem reminding people to vote on Wednesday, November the 9th which of course was the day after, and also creating confusion, saying you didn't need to vote on the day, you could vote later, you could only vote online, there was no point in turning up to polling booths, stuff like that. Not many people would believe that, but it you know, presumably tricked uh, a few voters. Teddy Goff of the Hillary Clinton presidential campaign 2016 told Panorama that messages of that sort heavily targeted African-American voters because they are predominantly uh, Democrat voters. Goff said he took it up with all the large social media companies. He was a bit coy about naming Facebook, but eventually admitted he took it up with Facebook. He said that none of them was willing to just take this information down straight away. Panorama then put that allegation to Milner, the spokesperson for Facebook, who straight out denied it. He said that the minute they were contacted by the Clinton campaign, they took down uh, material the moment it could be shown that it was disinformation. Then Panorama reports Facebook saying they don't want to take down fake news stories because they don't want to censor the internet. And then adds, it's more likely the company is reluctant to do that because it makes so much money out of fake news being present in the system. The programme opines that all those fake news stories help boost profits. 
the key to Facebook's profitability is engagement. The more time people stay online, the more money Facebook earns from advertising and fake news about the US election kept people engaged. Panorama then spoke to a uh, somewhat disgruntled ex-employee of Facebook who's dropped out and now lives uh, a kind of hippie existence in the, um, in the outback up there in Washington State. He said that Facebook claims that 1% of its content is fake news, but he said clickbait works and that 1% of content is generating a much, much larger percentage of total usage of Facebook as people share comments. This is all engagement which is needed in order to increase the value of Facebook to advertisers. Simon Milner was again pretty evasive when he was asked how much money Facebook made out of fake news. Specifically, he refused to put a number on it or even an estimate on it beyond saying it was uh, an insignificant or, or a tiny proportion. Panorama made the point that since Facebook is valued at something like 400 billion, then you could say that 1% of that um, might be insignificant compared to the total, but it would, would be a vast amount of money in absolute terms. The uh, term Milner kept using was negligible, that the amount of fake news on Facebook, he said, was small, What's that? One and two percent. And the amount of money made from people viewing that content was, again, you can tell from the edit that the question was put over and over again about the sum of money. But Milner was very slick. He was very hard. He kept saying that the amount of money is negligible when compared with the total amount of turnover of Facebook. But that could still mean hundreds of millions of dollars a year from peddling fake news or providing a platform for fake news. The question was put over and over again, but instead of providing any sort of answer, Milner kept repeating the soundbite that the amount of fake news was small and the amount of money was negligible, and also that the company was hoping to reduce the amount of fake news to zero. And he kept repeating this over and over again. You got the feeling that he would keep repeating that and remain incredibly cool until the cameras were off and the BBC team were well outside the building. The rest of the programme dealt mainly with other harmful material or complained about material which appears on Facebook, matters related to cyberbullying and ways of notifying and removing that, and also talked about the parliamentary inquiry into fake news, which of course has, with tremendous irony, been suspended so that the British general election can take place influenced by Facebook.